Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn more about the polygon tool. Uh, I want to create uh, one more model, uh, one more exercise with this uh, tool because uh, not to about subject mode, uh, because I, as I told you in the last lesson, uh, I think this is uh, one of the most used tools in uh, Edis Poly. So uh, let's try to uh, model a door. Now to uh, create that, let's start with a box. Uh, I'm going to change the height to 200 and, uh, 210. Uh, I'm going to change the length to 110 and the width to 5. So this is our uh, base shape. Uh, as you can see, this uh, looks like a box. So we are going to uh, start from this shape in here. I want to create these uh, indents, these um, Actually, these are milling uh, paths, I guess. I want to show you how to create that. Now, first, I want to add an edit poly modifier on top, as always. I'm going to hit 2 and select this edge in here. Hit Alt R to make a ring selection and hit Connect Settings to create some new edge loops. And then I'm going to increase this uh, segment count. Uh, let's count how many segments we will need. Uh, I'm going to assume we want a segment in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We want six seg new segments. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And let's hit uh, OK. And I'm going to hit one and select the uh, vertices and move these up. And then let's set the value for this. Uh, what I'm doing in here is I'm trying to make this height in here equal to this indent in here. So uh, I'm going to uh, visualize the end result and try to set these values according to that. But this one in here is a little bit longer than this. So let's do that as that as well. Okay, uh, this and this should be equal maybe a little bit down uh, by the way if you want to be exact about these you can use these grids this is a very cool trick or one th more thing i do is i create a box and just copy this and see that <laughs> eyeballing is not good enough but we as you know we can always change this later so don't worry about the dimensions that much in the beginning I guess the general dimensions uh, we should worry about, but not the details. Okay. Now uh, let's set this here. And I want to move this up. And I'm going to move this down. And so this length and this length should be the same. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave this uh, like this. And then I'm going to check in the end and see, uh, show you how I change this height later on. And for the, uh, the same thing uh, goes here as well. These should be equal, but I'm going to change that uh, in the end. Okay, I'm going to select this, hit uh, Alt R and connect again. Uh, this time I'm going to need four edges. So I'm going to edge loops, sorry. And I'm going to create four edge loops. And then I'm going to hit one again to go to the vertex mode, select these two, scale them up and try to, as I told you from before, try to make this a square because I want to set this edge or set the uh, length of this edge equal to this one. And then let's do the same for these as well. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to hit four and select these four fa uh, six faces, sorry. And then I'm going to hit bevel and try to uh, create this shape in here. Now, first thing is I want to uh, set the height to minus uh, 1.2-ish. And I'm going to leave the outline at zero and I'm going to hit apply and continue. Then I'm going to set the outline to uh, height to zero. And this time I'm going to change the outline value. Hit apply and continue again. This time I'm going to apply a height as well. And then I'm going to set the outline value to zero and go up a little bit. That way I will have this kind of a shape. Okay. Let's check this out. I guess they look 
same but uh, you maybe you need a detailed uh, view of this but for now i'm going to assume it's like this so i'm not going to worry about it that much and uh, it struck me that this door is a little bit thinner as well so i'm going to hit one and select all uh, everything and then move these in uh, actually <clears throat> i don't recommend you to actually do this like that because as you scale these down you will scale these inner indents as well so let me show you if i scale this down you will see that this value and this value is not equal anymore so i'm going to hit ctrl z instead of that uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to move things uh, i'm going to just select this and move it easy and that's it okay uh, maybe this is even thinner uh, so you can move this in a little bit more and then maybe select these two and scale only these Okay, this looks more like this door, I guess. Okay, and maybe these uh, dimensions are a little bit um, longer. So let's um, move these in. Uh, by the way, you can do this with dimensions as well. If you just hit uh, this offset button in here, you can just move this in one centimeters, for example. And then I can select this and move this in minus one centimeters. You could also use this as a reference for a background, but I'm trying to show you how to eyeball things because this will um, make you work uh, much faster. But let me show you uh, if you want to move, uh, move this in 3ds Max, let me show you how to do that as well. Uh, let me save this image separately. I'm going to right click copy this. Uh, go ahead and op open up Photoshop. File new. And I'm going to create a clipboard uh, sized image. I'm going to hit Ctrl V, which is paste. And then I'm going to save this as a JPEG. Let's save this to desktop for now. And I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to set the dimensions 250 by 250. And then I'm going to go to the desktop and just move this image in okay uh, this way you can use this as a reference and see how bad we are doing right now so let's uh but i guess this is uh the dimensions for this is uh, a little bit off but i don't know or it's a thinner door uh than i expected but whatever uh, let's uh, try to fix the dimension of this box dimensions of this box or door to meet these dimensions uh, it will be very easy uh, what what you need to do first is you select the model and hit alt x which will um, make the model see through uh, and let's get rid of these segments if you hit f4 you can see the edges as you can see now i can just hit one and just try to fit the dimensions to the image um okay i guess let's uh move this to right as well and i'm going to just hit one again just move these in a little bit and these in as well okay this is uh to make uh an exact replica of the reference of course you don't need to do this uh, but if you want you can do it as you can see if you have a hand drawing for example you can just place that on the background and just go over it um, and it will be very easy to do now let's uh, i'm going to activate the pivot point i'm going to uh, hit align and uh, click on the door and i want to set the pivot point to the center of the model first and then i'm going to in the z-axis i'm going to place the pivot point to the minimum point so that it will be on the bottom as you can see then i can just move this to the origin Okay, and I want to uh, add uh, one more detail to this model, which is the doorknob. And I have selected a doorknob that could be uh, could look uh, like it's a little bit difficult to model, uh, but you will see that uh, with Edit Poly, uh, we can easily model this these type of things as well. Uh, I'm not going to model everything for uh, like for example, this will take a little bit more time. I can show that to you. It's not that hard, but if the lesson is it will be too long then i will cut it but let, let's start and see where it goes 
I'm going to select the cylinder, hit uh, F for the, to go to the front view and create a cylinder in here. And let's uh, set the radius to 4 and the height to 2. And uh, let's hit Alt A and align this to the door. In the Y axis, I'm going to move the maximum point to the minimum point, and you can see that it fits. Uh, it just uh, sits on the face in here. And then I'm going to maybe decrease the size to one centimeters. Yeah, that's very better. I'm going to decrease the height segments to uh, one because we don't need any segments around here. And then I'm going to apply uh, add an edit poly modifier. Hit four to go to the polygon mode. Inset this. Um, I guess one point uh, or one point eight centimeters, something like that. And then extrude it. 1.5 centimeters. Then in, make one more inset. Let's keep this thinner. And then let's apply an extrude. Okay, this is the first uh, part of the model, this part in here. You can also do this, uh, you could also do this with lathe, but whatever, I guess uh, it's probably fast enough for this uh, kind of thing. Uh, so, and then I'm going to select this interface and hit detach. Detach this as a clone. And I, this will be the base for my uh, knob model. Then I'm going to hit 4, select this. I'm going to flip this face because uh, it looks... Uh, you can see that the... Let me hit P. Uh, you can see that this is the inner face and this is the outer face. And I want outer face to look outwards this time. So I'm going to flip this model. Flip this face, sorry. Uh, so that the inner face is this one. And then I'm going to hit 3 to go to the border mode. I'm going to select the border for the cylinder or circle. Hit uh, hold shift and move this outward. Okay. Then I can just uh, hold shift and uh, scale it in. I'm not going to try to do exactly the same thing. You could do it, of course. I, I can show you how to do that. it. But for now, I guess the cool detail is this one. So let's uh, focus on that. I'm going to hold shift and create another copy from those edges. Okay, and I'm going to hold shift and scale this down, then cap this. Okay. Uh, you don't want uh, these type of uh, more than four edged faces, but for now, let's leave it at that because in, uh, we will add things and you can see that it won't be a, that much of a problem. Now I'm going to hit two, select this, hit Alt R and connect. And then I'm going to slide this up. Then I can just hit four and select these four faces, five, four faces, yeah. And then I'm going to extrude these as well. Okay. Uh, let's hit one and make this uh, face straight for now and move this in. And I'm going to scale this down. Okay. Maybe even more. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to hit four and delete these faces. Uh, I like to work with borders uh, more so I have deleted them. You could extrude the faces as well, but for now let's just use with uh, do do it do this with borders. Uh, the advantage of borders is you can hold shift and create a lot of copies. Um, so it will, uh, in my opinion, it will be faster. Then let's uh, copy this. Then copy this up. And one more copy. Okay. Maybe we can hit one and make this a little shorter. I'm not really sure what I guess. Maybe no, make it a little bit longer, even right. We can also check the dimensions for this as well. Uh, we, I'm, I'm going to show to how to do, the, uh, show you how to do that as well, in a minute. Yeah, uh, it looks not that bad uh, right now. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to uh, fix the dimensions later. On. Now, okay, now uh, we need to create uh, the or play with the shape even a little bit uh, more. I'm going to 
hit one and select these faces and scale them up and move them in so that I can create this kind of type, type of an indent. Then we can just hit two, select these faces, select these faces and bridge them. Of course, if we would create this with uh, extrusions, uh, we wouldn't need to bridge those faces. Um, you could imagine that, I guess. Okay. Okay, now, let, now let's uh, apply a turbo smooth and see what's going on. Uh, you can see that we have a similar kind of a model, but it's not exactly the same. So let's fix this uh, even further. I can just select this. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm uh, using Alt S for show end result. You can see that if you go down to edit poly, uh, if you hit show end result, you can see the end result with Turbo Smooth. Uh, we haven't really seen Turbo Smooth, like we don't know how to model things with Turbo Smooth yet. But uh, uh, I wanted to show this to you anyways because I guess it will help when we get to that subject. And uh, I'm, as you can see, this just joins with this edge in here. So I'm going to hit Alt S and move this down so that I can create a shape like that. But let's select these edges as well. By the way, Alt S of course won't work for you because I assigned this shortcut from a from the shortcuts window. Uh, I can show how to do that, but for now you can just use this button. Okay. Uh, let's change the color to gray for this one as well. And let's uh, introduce some more iterations to Turbo Smooth. This will make the model look uh, smoother. And also, I can apply a chamfer to the base model. And let's increase the minimum angle to something like 50. Okay. Yeah, it started to look more like the uh, reference. Uh, it's not re still exactly the same uh, model, I guess. Uh, maybe we need to increase this height and I can add uh, two more edges in between here so that I could squeeze this uh, even further and if you um, add edges to the corners like this you can see that this looks more like manufactured I guess because these uh, sharp edges are uh, suggest me that this is uh, out of a uh, manufacturing process. Uh, uh, it's not hand built, I guess. Okay. Yeah, we can play with this even further. I can just select this uh, edge in here. Actually, this is not a that much of an easy model for you to start uh, Turbo Smooth. Uh, we will go over this subject. If you are frustrated with the model, just leave it be for now. Uh, you will see that we, we are going to learn more about Turbo Smooth uh, in the upcoming lessons. Don't worry about that. And uh, to keep these edges clean, uh, I, I can show you a method as well for this. I'm going to hit 4. Uh, this is a cool thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to hit 4 to go to the polygon mode. I'm going to click on by angle. If you do that, it will, with one click, you can select let's decrease this to 15 for example with one click you can select the um, faces that have 15 or less degrees in between so this will choose like these flat faces it's which is very cool now you can just inset this just a little bit so that we have this new edge in here and when you turbo smooth you will see that we have sharp edges at the corners which looks even better uh, for this kind of a thing, uh, of course. Uh, if you are looking for organic uh, things, then it won't work, of course. But I guess you get the idea. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> worry you more uh, with this model. Uh, but I guess it started to look like this model. I guess some there are some dimensions that are not matching, but this is a cool handle, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, but we will uh, don't worry. We will do a lot of tutorials about using Turbo Smooth in the upcoming lessons. So we are going to learn more about this subject. I'm going to apply a chamfer modifier to the door base as well, by the way. I'm going to hit chamfer and let's increase the edge uh, corner radius. 
And also, this store shouldn't have these type of smooth faces. I guess I'm going to change the uh, smooth entire object to smooth chamfers only, which will, as you can see, keep those faces flat. And you can see that we have a cool door. Uh, if you manage to model uh, this far, then could, uh, cheers. And uh, save the models, maybe you want to use this later on. Okay, thanks for listening. I had a lot of fun doing this lesson. I hope you do too. If you had fun and if you have learned uh, something, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.